Well, hello everyone, my name is Zwiggo and welcome back to Emerald Kaizo. The hardest game around on the Pokemon ROM hack market. And of course, you guys want me to suffer once again. And since I celebrated my one year anniversary on YouTube a few days ago, I thought that I would go with my favorite typing in the entire game, the ground typing. So I'll be beating this game with only ground type Pokemon. Or at least try to beat it, because I have no idea if it's gonna be possible. For the people that do not know what Emerald Kaizo is, let me explain that real quick to you. Emerald Kaizo is a super hard ROM hack that puts you at a disadvantage all the time. It starts off by not giving you any effort values, so you're always going to be stuck with the base stats of your Pokémon while the enemies are going to have very good stats. On top of that, you cannot use items in battle, but all of the opposing enemies will have held items in order to help them, like Lumberries or Berry Juices that will heal them up. So even if you get the Pokémon into red health and you think, I'm gonna win this one, it's gonna heal up just like that. Move sets have also been altered to where a lot has been made illegal, like setup moves. Most moves that require setup like Sword Stance or Double Team are out of the game. And even weather changing moves aren't in this game either, like Sunny Day or Rain Dance. Now that you know all of that, why don't you press that subscribe button? Because I am only 1000 subscribers away from 100k. I don't know what I want to do to celebrate it yet, but leave some suggestions in the comments down below if you have a great idea. So let's just jump into Emerald Kaizo with only ground types. I just gave myself my regular name because I couldn't think of a stupid pun. And I changed my starter into Trapinch because I wanted to pick Mudkip, but Mudkip technically isn't the ground type, so I had to change it around. I couldn't just change it to Marsh Tomb, right? But don't worry, the Swampert line will be available at the end of the game, so you will definitely be seeing our good boy in this run. I give my Trapinch a very stupid name, and I grind up my Trapinch because with Sand Tomb alone, we're not gonna be able to beat the Threeco, and at level 9, I learn Bite. With Bite, I'm able to one-shot the Trico, but only because I got a critical hit. It didn't really matter though. After that, I capture myself a Numel, and it's time for a Dutch lesson with Zwiggo once again, because Kamel means camel in Dutch. Now that's knowledge. I then capture a Sandshrew, a Cubone, and a Fampy, and one of these will go until the end of the run with us. But who will it be? After that, we have to fight Red for the first time, and his first Pokemon, Eevee, is a little bit of annoying because he sets up with curses, but a few mud shots easily take care of it. Next up is a Pikachu with Surf, but luckily Fampy is pretty bulky, so we can one-shot it after that. Then Bulbasaur comes out. I hit an Ice Shard, do about half, but we get taken out out by a single Mega Drain. Luckily, Camille can finish it off with a Flame Wheel. Next up is a Squirtle, and even though my Numel is 8 levels above it, it still gets wrecked by 2 Water Pulses, because it tanked 2 Magnitudes. Then I switch in Cubone and take out the Squirtle with a Headbutt, and last up is a Charmander, who almost takes down my Cubone with a lot of Flame Wheels and Burn Damage, but in the end, we come out victorious. I then go to the cave all the way in the back to get myself some more Ground Types in Rhyhorn, Onyx, and Geodude. And the Geodude name is gonna be Muscles, because you got the POOMP, the MUSCLES. After that little trip, it's time for us to take on Roxanne. And while most of her team are Rock types, which my Ground types are good against, one of her team is a Lily, which has Giga Drain in its arsenal. So if I even manage to get it down into red health, which I did, it just has to use one Giga Drain and it almost fills up its entire HP bar fully. And because of that Giga Drain, he was easily able to sweep through my entire team because nothing really stands up against it. So I decided to let Fampy evolve at level 25 into Dawn Fan. With our big elephant, we can one-shot Nose Pass. Barely not one-shot Relicant and it puts us to sleep, hits us with a Water Pulse, but we easily wake up and take it out after that. Next up is the Leap, so I switch into Numel because it isn't super effective on him. After spamming Flame Wheel and Magnitude for about 5 to 6 turns, he eventually loses. So I once again have to switch in Domfan to take out Lilip with two Mud Shots. Anaritha then gets one-shotted, and then the bulky Shuckle comes out. And because it's only bulky, and even though it set up a lot of curses, its attack is still nothing, and my Domfan can take it out with a lot, a lot of Mud Shots. Lunatone is next, so I go into Rhyhorn, I'm able to hit two Rock Throws before it takes me out with a few Confusions. And then I can switch in Domfan to finish this battle off with an Ice Shard. After that, we meet up with Mei at the Boathouse. But to be honest, her entire team was just a sweep with Domfan, we didn't even have a single issue. So we can take the boat to Dewford Town, in the gym our Sanctuary evolves into a Sand Slash, and then we can take on Brawly himself. 
Brawly starts off with an Hitmontop with Intimidate, which is not great for my Sand Slash since we are gonna be using physical attacks. Hitmontop is also pretty damn bulky because I had to hit 4 digs in order to take it out, but Sand Slash came out on top in the end. Next is Polyrath, I decide to hit it with one dig before it takes us out with an Ice Punch, then Donphan comes out and I hit a single Body Slam to finish off Polyrath. Hitmonlee is also a one shot with Body Slam. He's next to Pokemon Hitmonchan and Meditite as well, and finally is Hariyama who can take two. But this was a pretty damn easy gym battle. We then do some business with Stephen Stone down at Granite Cave to get some very special rocks, if you know what I mean. And then it's time for one of the hardest battles in the normal Pokemon games, but in this game, Mei isn't that hard at this point. Even though she starts off with an electric type and I start off with my trap pinch, which is a ground type, I still go down to it. That's how bad trap pinch is. But I can't wait until it evolves into Flygon because that's actually gonna be useful. After Trap Inch goes down, I switch into my trusty Dawn Fan, and one Ice Shard can finish off Minen. Crocona is next, and he's able to tank a Body Slam and hit me with a Waterfall, but we can then take him out. Next up is Grovile, who is faster than us and hits us with a Giga Drain, leaving us with 5 HP, but a single Body Slam is enough to take it out from full health. Next up is Pijato, and I tried to take it out with Rock Slide, but it took me out because it had priority in Quick Attack. So I then switch in Cubone and take out Pijato with two Rock Throws. He then sends out Nidorina which we can take out with a Bone Meringue, and finally is Charmeleon, who is able to take out my Cubone with a Fire Punch and also take down my Rhyhorn with two Dragon Claws before I got in a Magnitude, and finally Sand Slash can finish him off with a Dig. After that, I bite my way through Wally's level 70 Ralts because he doesn't have any attacking moves. And after taking on the trainers in the gym, my Cubone evolved into a Marowak. And if you've seen my Emerald Kaizel challenges, you will see that I always struggle on Watson. But this time, I have the advantage and I was able to actually beat him on my first attempt. And of course, his first Pokemon Jolteon has Hidden Power Grass, which takes down Trap Inch in a single hit. Even if you think that you have the advantage in this game, they're always gonna turn the tables. And then switching Camille, he is going to be able to tank those hidden powers pretty well and take down Jolteon with two magnitudes. Raichu is next, so I go into Donphan, he hits me with a Surf, which does a decent chunk of damage, but Mudshot is enough to finish it off from full health. Next up is Lantern, and he actually tanks a Mudshot, hits me with a Surf, and I'm left with a sliver of health, but one more takes it out as well. Ampharos is up next, and that thing can also tank a Munchot and finally take out my dumb fan with a Fire Punch. So I switch in Marowak, and I go for Boomerang to take out Ampharos, and then I learn Bone Rush, which is actually in this game just the same as Earthquake. His last two Pokemon, Electabuzz and Manectric, both go down to a single Bone Rush from Marowak. With that, we now have three gym badges and we can head on to our next red battle. But before we take him on, we actually have two evolutions. Trap Inch evolved into Vibrava and Numel evolved into Camera. And with this team, I tried to take on red. As you can see, my Pokemon are pretty good in terms of level. All around the level 40 mark, but this man has a level 36 Blastoise, which tears through my entire team. Nothing could stand up to it. And if I, if I were to get past this thing. He would still have a Snorlax and a Venusaur and a Charizard. I would never be able to beat him with these levels. So I decided to evolve Vibrava into Flygon. I also decided to get Rhyhorn off the team and get Geodude in his place and evolve him into Golem. And with my team being at around level 45, I went back to red. And this time Flygon was able to hit two Dragon Breaths on Pikachu even though it had hidden power ice and almost took me out in a single hit. After that Blastoise came out so I went for the Dragon Breath once again doing a little bit of chip damage and then going down to a Surf. So I then go into Donphan and even though Blastoise is able to put me asleep, my mud shots are able to in the end come out on top. Next out is Venusaur, he puts my camera up to sleep with a sleep powder, hits two Giga Drains, but my camera manages to hang on and finish it off with a single flamethrower. Next is Snorlax, I stay in, go for the Earthquake, but he has an Earthquake of his own and takes down Camerupt. Then I switch in my Sand Slash and finish off Snorlax with two Rock Slides. Next is Espeon, who makes quick work of my Sand Slash, so I go into Golem and manage to take out Espeon with an Earthquake, and finally is his Charizard. He hits an Earthquake, Golem hangs on, and I take the win with a Rock Slide. Now we're gonna fast forward a little bit to the Volcano fight with Maxi, and he starts off with the legendary Registeel. Luckily though, I started off with Golem, and he didn't really have anything to hit me with, so two Earthquakes can take him out easily. 
Handumi snicks and I know this thing has hidden power grass so I decide to go into sand slash and he is just toast. So then I go into Camille to do massive damage with an earthquake and take it out. Then Claydol comes out so I go into Flygon and crunch it to death. And then an Alakazam is there. I decide to stay in and go for the crunch but it has ice punch and boom Flygon is down and out. So I decide to switch in Marowak and finish off Alakazam with Bulmerang before he sends out his Crobat and I have to switch into Golem. But this Crobat has Giga Drain and almost takes me down in a single hit, but I'm able to hit a Rock Slide and take it down into Red Health as well, but then he finishes me off with an Air Slash. Then I go in Dunfan and go for the Ice Shard priority to finish off Crobat, and last up is Dust Clops, which we can also take down with Dolphan's Head Smashes, Mud Shots and Rock Slides. With that, we can now head on to Flannery, which is a Fire-type Gym Leader, so our boys should be good here. But before I went into this gym, I actually got myself some Quick Claws from the Sneasels, back in the granite cave because ground types aren't really that speedy and I thought quick claws are going to be our best hell item in this entire run. So with that I was able to do about half of Ninetales' HP with a rock slide from Slant Slash before we got taken out by an overheat. So I go into Flygon and take out Ninetales with Air Slash and she switches in a cast form. So I go into Marowak while it hits me with a solar beam but a bone Morang is enough to take it out from full health. She then sends out a blaze gun which obliterates my Marowak. So I go into my pride and joy Flygon and I have Air Slash on it so Blaziken isn't gonna survive two of those. Then it was Charizard's turn to shine, at least that's what she thought because I had a camera up which can tank a solar beam and counter with a rock slide. Next up is Typhlosion and I misclick so I go for rock slide and it isn't enough to take it out and it hits me with two earthquakes in order to take out my camera up. So I then go into Flygon and finish off Typhlosion with two air slashes as he sends out an Arcanine which I'm also able to hit once but it takes me out with two extreme speeds. And now it's time for us to wrap up this battle with one more Earthquake from Domfan. Since we do have four badges now, we can finally go ahead and take on our father. He starts off with one of the scummiest strategies in a double battle. Slaking has Truant, Espeon has Skill Swap, boom, Slaking doesn't have Truant anymore. Luckily I do have a strategy of my own, I decided to start off with Flygon because that thing has Levitate and that way my second Pokemon can just use Earthquake without hitting my own Pokemon. So with that combo we can easily take out Espeon and while I'm doing that I also use Air Slash with Flygun so that the Slaking would flinch. He then sends in a Snorlax but my Air Slash is able to finish off Slacking. He then switches in a Kangaskhan and go for an Earthquake and after that he switches out Kangaskhan into Swallow so that he can take my Earthquake and not do any damage to it. Luckily he uses a move that causes recoil damage on itself and my Flygun can finish off Swallow with an Air Slash. Eventually he switches in Kangaskhan again but we can take care of that rather easily as he puts his Snorlax to sleep with Rest in order to heal him up. Eventually he switches in Tauros and takes down my Flygon so my strategy is out of the window. I then go into Domfan and go for the Earthquake to take down the Tauros but because the Snorlax set up a lot of curses Earthquake isn't doing a lot of damage anymore so I switch in Camerupt in order to hit it with a lot of flamethrowers and eventually come out on top in this battle and get my 5th Gym Badge. Time to fast forward all the way to after the Weather Institute where we take on Mei. And she has a Raichu as her first Pokemon with Rain Dance. That's illegal, ma'am. Luckily our Marowak is strong enough to one-shot it with Earthquake. As she sends in a Nidoqueen which hits us with a Surf, but we are able to hit an Earthquake to take it out. Next up is Clefable who takes me out. So I go into Donfan to go for the Earthquake twice to take out Clefable. She then sends in a Freligator, I'm able to hit one hit smash because it misses its waterfall but then after that it takes me out with Ice Beam. So I decide to switch in Golem, Earthquake it because my Quick Claw activated and it's boom dead. And finally is Sceptile. I try to blow myself up but it is too fast and kills me with Leaf Blade so I switch in Camera up and I actually get taken out by it. So I switch in Flygon, I go for the Air Slash twice to win the battle. We then get the HM for Fly, and then it's time for the Flying Type Gym. And if you didn't know already, Wynona has the three legendary birds in Moltres, Zebdos, and Articuno. And even though almost every single team member of mine has Rock Slide, it still isn't that easy to take all of them down. Because my Quick Claw has to activate on the right moments, otherwise I'm basically toasted. It also doesn't help that most of our Pokemon have coverage for ground types, so we're not gonna have a great time if that's what you thought. Eventually I was able to come out on top and I start off the battle with Domfan and Flygon and my Domfan is gonna head smash the Zapdos to take it out in a single hit. She then sends out her own Flygon and my Flygon is gonna go for Dragon Claw on the Aerodactyl to do about half of his health. 
I then double up on the Flygon with Ice Shard and Dragon Claw in order to take that thing out as well. She then switches in Crobat and I go for the Dragon Claw on Aerodactyl in order to take it out and my Head Smash also finishes off the Crobat. Her last two Pokemon are Articuno and Moltres and they double up on my Flygon in order to take me out. So I switch in Camera Up and take out Moltres with a Head Smash from Dumbfan. The Recall Damage takes me out and the Articuno takes out Camera Up so I switch in Golem and Marowak in order to finish it off with a single Rock Slide. Since we now have 6 Gym Badges we go to Mount Pyre in order to talk to Archie because he's once again colorblind. Even in Emerald Kaizo they couldn't make him see colors. And after that we head into Mount Chimney to the heart of the volcano in order to do a fight against Maxi. And this battle isn't that hard in order to win, but still I did have a little bit of trouble because his last Pokemon was an Entei who did have Solar Beam, Extreme Speed and Sacred Fire so he can do a lot of damage against every team member that I have. Anyway, on about my 7th attempt I was able to finish off Maxi. He starts off with Tyranitar, I start off with Flygon, only 2 Earthquakes can take him down while he just goes for an Earthquake and we have Levitate so he's just stupid. He then sends out his own Flygon but luckily ours is just way too strong and we can finish him off with 2 Dragon Claws as well while getting hit with a Solar Beam. Next up is Gengar, so I switch in Sand Slash to do some chip damage with Rock Slide while it hits me with an Ice Punch and almost takes me down. The turn after, it is done and done for my Sand Slash. So that's where I switch into Flygon in order to take it out with a Crunch because I knew it was going to be able to one-shot from this range. Next up is Arcanine, so I switch in Marowak and I go for the Earthquake, but it doesn't quite do enough damage because of the Intimidate, so it takes me out with two Heat Waves. So I then go into Flygon and finish off Arcanine with an Earthquake, he then switches in Executor and my camera up can easily take that out with Flamethrower. And last up is Entei, once again hits me with a Sorrel Beam but I'm left with more than enough HP in order to take him out with an Earthquake once more. After that Maxi fight it's time to check up on Archie and his Submarine. I went through the entire Team Aqua hideout without any trouble and eventually made my way to Moss Deep City where we have to do another gym battle with Tate and Liza. Their leading Pokemon is the Eon duo Latios and Latias, but our combo of Flygon and Donphan can take out Latios with a crunch and a head smash. They then switch in Gardevoir and take down my Donphan, so I switch in my Camerupt as my Flygon hits a crunch on Latias. After that I go for Ancient Power with Camerupt on Gardevoir and get my boosts and I also go for Crunch on the Latias to take him out. They then switch in Starmie and take out my Camerupt so I switch in Golem. I then hit a Crunch on the Gardevoir but they then take out my Golem and I have to switch in Sand Slash. After that I just decide to Earthquake away at the rest of her team with my Sand Slash and Marowak in the end because Flygon went down and we come out victorious because Jiraji can only tank one of the Earthquakes. Before we go to the Seafloor Cavern we first have to take on Maxi together with Steven but that fight wasn't anything special so I'm just gonna skip over that. After that it is time to go to the Seafloor Cavern and we reached the end rather quickly without having too many problems because our team is at a pretty decent level. As we fight Archie it is another double battle with him starting off with Raikou and Suicune. I decide to go for the double earthquake to dig down Raikou and Quillfish and put Suicune into red health. They then switch in Kingdra and the Suicune goes for Hydro Pump on Donphan to take me out in a single hit. I then go into Marowak and I go for the double earthquake once again taking out Suicune and Kingdra as they send in Dragonite and Metagross. The Metagross protects himself from the Earthquakes and they can then take out my Marowak easily, so I switch in Camera Up after that. My Flygon is able to hit a Dragon Claw, but Camera Up goes down to a Hydro Pump once again. And then I switch in Golem, I take out a Dragonite with Dragon Claw and finish off Metagross with two more Earthquakes. After that we go to the Sky Pillar in order to wake up Rayquaza and get myself a new team member in Claydol, which will be our first real special attacker and Psychic is a pretty useful typing as well. We then see how the two children are fighting, Daddy Snake comes along, shouts at them and they go back to their rooms. After that we had to do the entire gym and because it's water typing I didn't want to take any risks so my team is now all level 100. Walla starts off with a Kingdra and Dragon Claw takes care of that. Next up is Cast Form who goes down to a single Earthquake. Then Lapras comes out so I go into Donphan, go for the Rock Slide that is super effective and takes it out in one shot as well. And then Swampert comes out. He just hangs on from my Earthquake and is able to miss a Yawn so I'm pretty lucky there and another Earthquake takes it out. Next up is Milotic and even though I'm almost 30 levels above it, a Surf still does a lot of damage. 
But then I go for Earthquake and it's able to one shot on my Lodic. No idea how. Then Ludicolo comes out who can finish off Donphan, so I switch in Flygon and finish this battle with an Air Slash. With that, we cannot get our 8th Gym Badge because we also have to beat Juan in order to get the 8th Gym Badge. But this battle is basically the same except it's a double battle. But I have the perfect strategy with Claydol and Flygon. Since they both have Levitate, we can just go for Earthquake spamming all the way and we won't have any drawback to that. And that is all I did. I just spammed Earthquake through the entire battle and I won. Even his last Pokemon, Ludicolo, even though it's not very effective on him, I could still smash that thing into pieces. And with that, we have our 8th Gym Badge. But before we can head on to the Elite Four, I have to capture myself, so literally myself, a Marsh Tome, and I'm also going to be capturing a Quagsire because I'm going to need some mons that can withstand Glacia's water and ice attacks. And so we sweep through Victory Road very easily, but all of our ground types and we can reach Sydney as our first Elite Four member. Of course, the entire Elite Four and Champion is going to have level 100 Pokemon. So let's see how our Pokemon are going to do here. Sydney decides to lead with a Sableye and I lead off with my Camel. So I flamethrower it twice in order to finish it off rather quickly. Next is Tauro, so I go with Claydol Psychic in order to do more than half of his health, but then he switches into Houndoom. So I decide to go into Quagsire and he goes for a Crunch which does half of my health, so Quagsire is just dead and I'm sacrificing him here. So then I go into myself, as the Houndoom goes for Hidden Power Grass, I'm only left with 17 HP, but my Earthquake can take it out in one hit. Jolteon is up next, so I switch in my Flygon and go for the Earthquake, and since I outspeed, it's able to one-shot. For Tauros, I switch back into Donphan and head smashed it into Oblivion. His last two Pokémon are Alakazam and Machamp. Alakazam goes down to an Earthquake from Flygon, and Machamp can't take a Psychic from Claydol, even though it was a critical hit, but I don't think that mattered. Next up is Phoebe, and I decide to go back in with Kamel as she leads off with a Gengar. It's good that we're pretty bulky though, so we can two-shot the Gengar with flamethrowers while taking a lot of damage in the process. The next Pokémon is Ludicolo, so I switch in Flygon and go for the Earth Slash, but he hangs on with a little bit of health remaining and takes me out with a single Ice Beam. So then I switch in Claydol and I outspeed to take out Ludicolo with Psychic. He then sends in Dusclop, so I go into Camera go for the Earthquake, but it isn't even enough to do half of his health as he hits me with a Shadow Ball, takes me out. As I go into Dawn Fan and go for an Earthquake, he then decides to go for Rest, but luckily my Earthquake does more than half of his health, so we can take him down with two of those. As his Sableye then comes out, who likes to use Double Team, but my Dawn Fan isn't having any of it, head smashing him twice to take him out too, and then Crobat comes out. Luckily, Donphan has another head smash in him to take that thing down in a hit as well. And last but not least is Gardevoir, so I switch in Claydol and I go boom in order to win against Phoebe. Now, this is the fight where I thought that I might not be able to get past. The fight with Glacia. But I did prepare myself a little bit with Swampert and Quagsire, which are going to be a big help in this battle. But even though I had those two, it wasn't easy to get past Glacia. Yes, I got past her. But with a lot of problems, about 56 attempts if I counted right. The hardest Pokemon on her team for me to deal with was Dugong because it had Swift Swim and basically outsped anything and everything if my Quick Claw didn't activate. And on top of that, because of the rain, its water type moves do way too much damage in order for my team to tank a few of them. So only Quick Law activation could really save me in this moment. After that there is also Lapras which can tank a lot of hits and dish them out pretty well as well. But the main threat was definitely Dugong. So after attempting a lot of times I decided to use an Aether on my Claydol to replenish that 1 PP of explosion as well. She as always starts off with a Glilly, so I lead off with Donphan, he hits me with an Ice Beam and left with 12 HP, so I go for the Head Smash to finish off Glilly and myself as well. Next up is the Big Bad Dugong and it has Hidden Power Grass, so I switch in Quaxar, I am able to hit one Earthquake as he easily takes me out with two of his stupid Hidden Powers. I then switch in myself, but my Quick Claw activates as my Earthquake finishes off the stupid Dugong. Next up is Waylord, but my Swampert is able to somehow kill it with two Earthquakes. I'm very happy about that. His own Swampert comes out and I'm able to hit one Earthquake before he puts me to sleep and finishes me off with three Muddy Waters. So then Flygun comes out, who can take care of Swampert with Earthquake, as she sends out Regice and I go into Camerupt. 
I am able to hit one Ancient Power as the Red Gize goes for the counter to take out my stupid Camel in one hit. Then Flygon comes out once more and can finish off Red Gize with another Earthquake. And then it's time for our last Pokemon, Lapras. So I decide to go into Clay Doll and go for the Explosion, but it hangs on with a little bit of HP. But my Flygon is here, able to outspeed it and Earthquake it to death. And we can finally move on to Drake. It's been so long since I've been able to beat this game. Let's hope we can do it right now. Drake starts off with his Latios and I decide to lead with my best Pokemon, Flygon. I decide to go for Dragon Claw, it doesn't even do half as he kills me with a single Draco Meteor. I then go into Donphan, my Quick Claw activates and the Head Smash takes out Latios. Next out is Kingdra, so I go into Quagsire to Earthquake it twice and tank two Draco Meteors as well to finish off Kingdra. And then Tyranitar is the next Pokemon. He manages to outspeed Quagsire and send him to the Shadow Realm, so I send myself out here and I am able to two-shot Tyranitar and tank an Earthquake pretty damn well. Next out is Salamance, so I stay in and I go for the Ice Punch, but it isn't quite enough as he hits me with a Draco Meteor, but I hang on and hit one more Ice Punch, that is two Quick Law activations in a row, and the Salamance is down and out. Next out is Dragonite, and that thing outspeeds with an extreme speed to take out Swampert, so I go into Clay Doll. I want to go for Explosion, but I forgot to use an Aether. But luckily, my second Psychic is able to get a critical hit in order to take down Dragonite. Otherwise, we probably would have lost because he set up two Dragon Dances. Last up is his Latias. And my Claydol is able to hit a Hyper Beam as he uses Recover. He then doesn't take me out, I hit another Hyper Beam, but then Claydol finally goes down. I switch in Donphan and the only attack I can go for here is a Rock Slide. And I get the critical hit in order to take down Latias. Otherwise, we probably would have been screwed. And we can head on to the champion battle against Steven Stone. He starts off with his ace Pokemon Metagross, but that isn't his ace in this game though. We go for the Earthquake with Donphan, and boom, it's down and out. Next up is Starmie, so I decide to go into Flygon and Earthquake it as my Quick Law activates in order to take it down in one shot. Jiraji then comes out, but I know that it's part Steel type, so I decide to stay in. It's able to tank an Earthquake, hit a Meteor Mash, but the second Earthquake does finish it off. Next up is Mewtwo, I decide to go for the Earthquake, it doesn't even do half and it takes me out with a single Psychic. So then it's Donphan's time to shine, its attack is higher than Flygon's so I knew it would one shot with Earthquake and that is exactly what happens. And then his Deoxys came out, I thought I could easily tank an attack from this, but he went for Psycho Boost and it one shots me from full health. So I go into Quagsire, I am able to hang on with 67 HP and take out Deoxys with Earthquake and his final Pokemon is an Aerodactyl who takes out my Quagsire with a single Sky Attack, so I go into Swampert myself and finish this battle with two Surfs. And there you have it! I managed to beat Emerald Kaizo with my favorite type of them all, Ground. This feels so good completing this game, that's why I kind of like playing Emerald Kaizo. It's not fun playing through the game, but once you beat it, it just gives you this feeling of accomplishment. And honestly, because I now know where I can find the Quick Claws, I can probably do it with a Steel and the Bug types as well. So if you guys would like Redemption Run, so where I just go through the Elite Four with the Steel and Bug type once again, but then with Quick Claws, let me know in the comments down below and I'll probably be able to beat them. And that just makes me think that probably anything is possible in this game if you just have the Quick Claws. You just need to get a lot of luck with them. Anyway, that was Emerald Kaizo. If you guys have any more suggestions what I should do, maybe with Emerald Kaizo or other ROM hacks, let me know in the comments down below. I of course want to thank my Patreon and membership supporters because they have been a great help on supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, the link will be in description and there is a lot of benefits that you can get. You can also still buy merch if you're interested in that. And with that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like subscribe and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo and I'll see you guys next time.